Gentlemen, and welcome hockey fans to the Adora Pool Ice Center at tonight's matchup between Metro State and your Colorado State Rams. <laughs> Introducing tonight's starting lineup for the Roadrunners at left defense, number four, Jake Reiner. At right defense, number 12, Anthony Newsom. At left wing, number 27, Daniel Dvorak. At center, number 21, Austin Shea. At right wing, number 57, Matt Winkle. In goal, number 35, Hampus Akasen. Metro State is coached by Steve Quayler. And now, for the honor box starting lineup, for your Knights of the Green and Gold, the Colorado State Rams. At left defense, a senior from Littleton, number six, Brian Casario. At right defense, a freshman from Fort Collins, number seven, Johnny Tower. At left wing, a sophomore from Denver, number 17, CJ Nitchin. At center, a senior from Highlands Ranch, number 26, Corey Taylor. At right wing, a senior from Castle Rock, number 29, Austin Ensay. Starting in goal, a sophomore from Highlands Ranch, number 30, Joe Morgan. Head coach for the Colorado State Rams is Joel Weeks. The general manager is Joe Chirac. Tonight's officials are linesmen Lucas O'Connor and Nate Williams. The referees are Mike Wiegert and Craig Steinhauer. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we ask that you please remove your hats and stand as we honor America with the singing of our national anthem. Please welcome from Colorado State, Tegan Smith. Can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming? Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the rocket's red glow, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave for the Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Colorado Sports TV's coverage of the CSU Rams versus the Metro State Roadrunners. We're really excited to get started this season. This will be our sixth season with the Rams. And it's gonna be our best one yet, I can, I can already tell. Mainly because you don't have to listen to me. <laughs> We've actually got some guys who know what they're doing with this year. Litos and Tristan are going to be on the mic with us for several games. And I'm going to turn it over to them now as the Rams and the Roadrunners come to the center circle. Good evening, folks. I'm Litos Castro. Tristan? It's nice having you out here today, Litos. Got a beautiful day for a game. First game of the season. And the Rams are looking to start it off right now. And the puck has been dropped. And we are already starting off the action. This one's headed into the CSU zone now. It's a fight behind the net. Roadrunners looking to make a play. They can't make it now. It's going the other way now. Being carried down the ice. It's going to be a rush to the puck there. 
Mini fight there. Big shove in the corner. Now fight on the blue line. It's going to be a safe one for Taylor to handle. Now going across now. It's going to be a rush to the front there, and it's going to be frozen. And a cover by the Metro City goalie. It's going to be Hampus Eckeson. Nice little bit of action here. The next face off coming in to the Roadrunner zone. Drop. It's going to be fight on the wall now. Drop back towards the blue line. This is going to be a two on one chance for the Roadrunners. And it looks like it's going to be taken away by the Rams now. Trying to turn it around. Just can't. Big shove, though, heading down. Still fighting behind in this corner. CSU looking to get it out. Possible shot. And it's a fight in front of the net. It's going to be called. No goal. We're already seeing the aggression come out from both teams. And that was a shot from number 29 at the blue line from Metro City, Blaine. Men a terror. And the face off now to come into the CSU zone for the first time. And that's going to be a big fight in the corner there. Big shoving along the wall. Possible chance for the Roadrunners. He's looking to set it up. Bouncing puck. And it's going to be another frozen one there. We see Joe Morgan already having to put in some work for his team in the net. And it's going to be a line change, it looks like, for the Roadrunners. They're going to bring out some new faces. And that face-off's going to be tipped off, still in the CSU zone here. The Rams looking to clear it out. This one. The Rams getting some heavy pressure as they're trying to get this one out of their own zone. It's going to be an awry pass and a possible chance for the Roadrunners. This one's going around in the corner. Some more pushing and shoving we see from both teams here. Getting it away. It's going to be a one-on-one -on -one chance. The Rams are rushing down the other way. Three-on-one. Possible chance. And that one's going to be shot just way wide of the goal. And now it's heading back the other way. That's going to be Miller on that one, number four. He's going to try and turn it around. Another fight near the CSU goal here. That's got to put Morgan on his heels a little bit. This one across the red line. Roadrunners trying to generate a play here. Able to buy some time as the Rams collide in the middle there. The Roadrunners trying to set something up here. Puck behind the net. Possible shot chance. No, that one gets deflected out. Another shot, and that one gets blocked. He's going to be tipped out there, but easily caught at the center line. And trying to set up a quick play. That one gets intercepted by the Rams. And that one's jumped in to the Roadrunner zone. Three of the Rams there to... Well, apply some pressure there, and they're going to possibly win that one. Rams now with a chance in the corner. Lots of pushing and shoving again. Looking for an option. And that one's going to be shot glove save. And we did see a lot of action down in the Ram zone with uh, Morgan making a few saves. And we saw a large, big hit from Kyle Riley to slow down the Roadrunners from making another chance on that. You gotta love the aggression from both teams. I'm sure this crowd is loving it as well. Again, we're fighting along the wall here. It's in the Roadrunner zone. That one's gonna be taken away now. A big hit on the wall. Mother big hits. This one going across the blue line. The Rams taking control now. That's going to be Anse giving it off. And that one's going to be possibly uh, dipped fast, but it looks like they're going to get there first. That's going to be Nitchin. That one's now behind the Roadrunner's net. He's going to try and get that out of there. Pass off to the side. And that one's going to get knocked away up to the ceiling. We're going to have a stop to play there. And you cannot play the puck after it hits the ceiling. <laughs> I don't play it where it lies, like in golf. <laughs> Is that a rule change? I'm pretty sure that was, a, that was an adaptation there. <laughs> Another face off in the Roadrunner zone. 
It's a fight, drops back, the shot, blocked. Possible shot and a goal! Goal by the Rams, scoring first on this one. That is a huge goal scored by the Rams. With 16.35 left to go, the lead goes to the Rams. We're gonna wait to see who that goal was scored by. But what an opportunity for these Rams. Looks like we got an icing call. We're heading down into the Ram zone. And I do believe that was number eight, Sam Coat, that has scored that goal. But we will see with uh, proper verification. That is something you truly love to see, a rebound shot coming off. Colorado State goal! Scored by number eight, Sam Coat, with the assist to number 12, Tyler Nelson. Coat from Nelson, Rams goal at 3.25. Coming off that big goal, we've already got some more chances happening for the Rams. They tried to keep that from going out of the zone, knocked it back, but just couldn't keep it there. This one's getting dumped into the Ram zone now. And Morgan's going to try and make a play on that one. Fighting in the CSU zone. That one's going to get a blocked dump. That one tried to get past to the center. That one was stopped short. And that one's going to get knocked into the net for another stop to play. The faceoff will continue to be in the Rams defensive zone as you cannot flip it out into the <laughs> other side of the ring. <laughs> All these different areas you just can't play the puck into. There are boundaries in the game. <laughs> and this one, a fight right off the face off. And that's going to be Miller, Liam Miller, trying to take that down the other way. He's able to get by. He's in the corner. Big slide there from a road runner. And now they're trying to get it out of their own zone. Rams fighting to keep it in. And that one's going to get taken away. It's going to be number 18, Cody Pichola. He's now taken down into the Rams zone. And a big collision on the wall. Rams trying to cause a diversion there. And that one gets bounced out to the center line. And that one's going to get dumped in now. Roadrunners looking to make a line change. Time for Rams to set up a plan of attack now as they are facing some pressure behind the net. And a little bit of moves we're seeing behind the net from the Rams, but a possible shot off a misplay. And that one gets knocked out, but still in the Rams zone. Roadrunners trying to keep it alive. Number seven, Ryan Bishop heading around for that one. And a big shove on the wall again. The Rams trying to clear it out. Some spinning around in the corner. Rams trying to get it out of their own zone still. Possible chance. That one's going to get dumped a big shove into the wall. Roadrunners trying to slow it down. Set up a play. And that's going to be number 65 for Metro State. Dumping that one in. Rams now trying to set up a counterattack. Possible chance for the Rams. He's got some help. In the corner it goes. This one might be still fighting from both teams. Off to the center line now. Roadrunners possible chance. Rams dump it back. Give it back to the Roadrunners. And we see small hit there. Not enough to knock him off course. And that one's going into the corner now. And it's dumped a long way. It's going to be a race to that one. And we're going to get an icing call. Icing call on the Rams, so it will ba be back in their defensive zone. Working hard, Joe Morgan, the goalie for the Rams, to make sure none of these pucks go into his net.
Rams have the early lead after that first goal, and it's good that Morgan is on his toes because a lot of these faceoffs coming into their own zone. And it looks like number 17 for the Rams. That's going to be Nitchin getting tossed out of the faceoff. And an immediate drop back, shot blocked. Still from the crowd there, the faceoff. That one's going to get bounced off the wall. Trying to dump it in. Run runners keep it alive. Now the Rams taking it the other way. That's number 17, Nitchin. The possible shot and a big save. Oh, we're getting that rule of goal. Number seven, the freshman, Johnny Tower, gets himself a goal on a what seemed to be saved by the Metro City Roadrunners. And it seemed like Eckerson had some words for the referees, almost trying to plead. It looks like he was trying to plead the case that the net had been knocked off but it looks like the refs are gonna stand firm on that decision. That is a goal to give the Rams a two to zero lead in this first period with 13.06 to go. I believe the initial shot Colorado was from Nitchin. State goal! Score by number seven, Johnny Tower. With the assist to number 17, CJ Nitchin. Tower from Nitchin, Rams goal. Let Coming off the goal, the Rams just had another huge opportunity. That was a three on one there and they made a pretty nice passing play. Just the goalie was able to stop them. We're seeing most of the faceoffs being down in the Rams zone, but now it looks like Eckerson's getting some pressure on his own on his own net. And and it looks like we're going to have a penalty. I see two minutes going up on the clock there. So this is going to be the first power play opportunity for the Rams, it looks like. And that's going to be number 28 for the Rams. Kyle Riley thrown out of the faceoff on that one. And a shot, and that one's going to get bounced off the net. Number 15, Hunter Behrens. Two minutes for cross-checking. Behrens, two minutes for cross-checking. Metro State penalty. We just heard it. Two minutes for cross checking on the Roadrunners. So now we're going to see for the first of the season the Rams power play. Already a shot off of that one. That one gets blocked and it's now going the other way. Reaching for it, just couldn't get to it, but the Rams still have to play a little bit of defense. And. Looks like we might have another penalty. Now a penalty going to the Rams. So four on four action will be played for the next one minute, 20 seconds. And that I believe is Brian Casaria that just went in for the Rams. So we have Hunter Barons in for the Roadrunners and now Brian Casaria in for the Rams. Rams penalty is on number six, Brian Casaria. Two minutes for roughing. Casaria, two minutes for roughing. Colorado State penalty at 7.53. Like you said, we see the four on four action starting up. Good chance to show for both teams what they're made of on these special team situations. Roadrunners. Trying to keep control on their own side. A big catch there. And a big hit on along the wall from the Rams. But it's being taken down the other way. It was a big hit from number 26, Taylor, playing for the CSU Rams. Lincoln's dumped off at the side. And a shot, and that one gets blocked. I mean, it's a big glove catch there from Morgan. The puck was just plopping in on Morgan as he saw it come in. He just stuck out his glove and grabbed it. Took away any opportunity. Took away any opportunity of the Roadrunner scoring there. And a face off in the Rams zone. 
and a possible chance for the Rams now. That one gets passed off to Miller. He's taking it through the slot and a shot and a save, and that one gets knocked away. Nice little pullback by Miller there to get off the shot. And fighting in the corner. And that Roadrunners penalty is just going to run out, but a shot for the Rams off the post. And it's now going the other way. But now the Rams have it again. Nitchin trying to pull some work there. Trying to toe, toe drag around the defender to try and get that puck to the net. And again, oh, no, Nitchin taking it away. And the power play opportunity about to run out for the Roadrunners. And the Rams have control of their own zone. They're going to dump that down to run out the rest of the seconds on their, power, on their uh, penalty kill. Excuse me. Casaria comes out for the Rams. And we're back to five on five hockey. Roadrunners taking it down. And a no call tripping there. And it's now going the other way. A one on one chance. Roadrunners are running back. That one gets shot and deflected. And off the back net. Nine fifty. Uh, oh, excuse me. Sorry. The Rams making a uh, switch here with their with their lines, bringing out some new, bringing out some new guys. Really starting to see what the Rams are made of, as they have the two zero lead with nine fifty left to go in this first period. Small shot coming from the blue line. Roadrunners trying to get it out of their own zone now. Again, the Rams giving them heat, big pressure in their own zone. It's now going to the opposite side of the ice. That's a big hit. We're on the center line. Possible setup chance for the Roadrunners. Roadrunners working it out of their own zone, but a big shove. Big hit by number 10, Grayson North. And another big hit in the corner from the Roadrunners showing their aggression towards the Rams now. And the Rams just barely keeping it in the zone, but it looks like the Roadrunner is going to be able to clear it out. And dumping it back, going to be number 10, Grayson North. Getting dumped back into the Roadrunner zone. That one, again, looks like we're going to be seeing a little bit of back and forth. And the icing call now. Flipped into the Rams zone. That will be a icing call on the Roadrunners, which will result in a faceoff for their in their defensive zone. So it looks like Kyle Riley is going to be taking the faceoff for the Rams. And a little bit of a delay there. He is once again thrown out of the faceoff circle. That's going to be Liam Miller now to take it for the Rams. For Metro State, that was number 16, C.J. Miller taking that face off. Roadrunners working it out of their own zone, fighting on the blue line. Puck sliding around, gets dumped into the Rams zone. Again, that's going to be Miller with the puck there on the side. He's going to look for his teammates there. Possible set of chance coming around. Saves after the shot. Another shot and blocked. Goes off wide. And working it around, possible chance from the defense. Working it behind the net again, possible chance, shot! And off the back net, no harm, no foul for the Rams. Possible chance again, a lot of action behind the Rams net. And this one gets taken out of the zone now. Roadrunner's trying to reset, that one gets dumped in. And the Roadrunner's going for a line change. I think the Rams are going to be happy they get this little break. Again, working it from behind their own net. And it looks like we might just have a tripping call. Penalty on the Rams, number 28. That is Kyle Riley. So now we're going to get a full two minute power play chance for the Roadrunners. Rams penalty is on number 28, Kyle Riley, two minutes for dripping. Riley, two minutes for dripping. Colorado State penalty at 12-13. 
Roadrunners with their first power play chance. Full power play chance, excuse me. Dvorak's going to pass that back. It's sent across. Number 57 for the Roadrunners. It's getting taken deep into the Rams zone. We're going to see if the Rams penalty kill can uh, stand up to the task again. Looks like we got a lost stick in the back of the net. Behind the net, excuse me. And I believe that is number six for the Rams. That's going to be Casario without a stick. And that's going to be some big hits. Still possible chance for the Roadrunners. Behind the net, Casario still without a stick. He's just a lone man. And that's a big block from him. It looks like number 23 now without a stick. That's going to be Tenor. And that's a goal for the Roadrunners. <laughs> Working off the power play, the Roadrunners get one back. And they're now within one with 6.38 left to go in this first period. Metro State power play goal is for by number 21, Austin Shea, with the assist to number 29, Blaine Minatra. Shea from Minatra, Roadrunners power play goal at 13-22. Coming off of that goal, the Rams did have a chance with a possible one-timer, but was taken away on a missed opportunity. So it's 2-1 now, 6-10 left to go in this first period, and we're about to have a face-off in the Rams zone. And that's going to be El Nicky taking the, the face-off for the Roadrunners. This one going around. Roadrunners, possible shot. That one goes wide of the net. Rush on the wall. More aggression coming from the teams. And that one's a shot deflected and goal! Coming back quick. Roadrunners with two goals immediately, one after another. And just like that, we have a tie game. 2-2 with 5.53 left in the game. The Roadrunners have just tied it up. I don't even think a minute went by. I believe it was about 20 seconds. <laughs> Actually, I think you mean left in the first period. And not the game. Oh, yeah. <laughs> left in the first period. Sorry. <laughs> and off the face-off, Rams trying to get that one back. I mean, I know it's been a blur, but, man, did I miss that much? <laughs> <laughs> Metro State goal is scored by number 55, Chris Elnicki, with the assist to number 13, Kevin Behrens. Elnicki from Behrens, Roadrunners goal at 14.07. Smacked out of the air, the Roadrunners with the chance. Thrown across the net. Again, we're back in the Rams zone. Rams trying to take it out now. And that one's going to get knocked up. And out of, play. out of play. Seem to have hit a light in the stadium. <laughs> I wonder how they get to hit those skinny little bars. So this face off coming at center ice. It's going to be Riley and I believe Miller to take that face off at the center. This one going into the Ram zone across the blue line. Three of the Rams there to put pressure on the wall. And that's going to be Johnny Tower, who scored one for the Rams already, trying to clear it out. And now to the other number seven, Ryan Bishop for the Roadrunners. He's going to pass that back at the line. That one's going to get blocked. The Rams trying to clear it out now. This one going behind the Rams net. We've seen a lot of action behind there today. And it's a possible three on two chance, trying to get some control. And the Rams getting across the blue line. And an interfering hit there. 
Knock the Rams off course. Riley fighting for that one for the Rams. He's now trying to take it down himself. Fighting off one, trying to get it between two others. Shot and a glove save. Kevin Barron's with the shot, number 13 for the Rams. With the opportunity of the goal. Saved by the Roadrunners. Glove save. Four fifteen left to go in this first period. We've had four goals scored to a team. The action has not ceased one bit since the first puck drop. And the Rams trying to set up an opportunity. They're in the corner now. That one gets tossed around. We're going around to the other side. Possible pass to the center. That one's not able to be made a shot off of. Some more shoving coming from both sides. And the Roadrunner is able to get it out of their own zone. That I believe is going to be number 27, Daniel Dvorak, trying to set up a play for his team as he's applying pressure to this Rams defense. Trying to clear it out. Jonathan Johnson for the Rams. Now Roadrunner trying to take it out of the way. Two Rams colliding on that one. To put a stoppage in that plan. Try to get the pass. That one gets deflected back into the Ram zone. Possible chance. Shot saved from Morgan. And a few shoves going between the players. Face off in the Ram zone and a shot off the face off for the Roadrunners. That one gets blocked. And it looks like off that shove there, Roadrunners were looking for a penalty and didn't get one. Play goes on behind the Rams net. Into the corner, possible pass to the center there, but that one gets knocked away. Gets out of the Rams zone and the Rams taking it down the other way. Possible chance, a one on one and trying to get a backhander on it. Just couldn't do it. I believe that's. Number nine for the Rams. Sam Thrutchley with that one, but now taken down the other way fast. That one goes across. Possible chance in a shot. That one bouncing around Deflected towards the net. off the defender. Seems to be some pushing and shoving, arguing between the players after the whistle. Looks like the refs are trying to calm the players down a little bit. Looks like we're gonna have two players going into the penalty box. Offsetting penalties for the Rams and the Roadrunners, resulting in a four on four play. Oh, looks like we've had a change of mind there. So the Rams don't have to serve a penalty. Looked like Sam Coat was gonna have a have to serve a penalty. They took him out of the penalty box. There is still a roadrunner in the box though. Looks like the refs are trying to sort out what we got going on. Now the penalty being taken off of the board for the Rams. So it looks like we're gonna have a power play chance for the Rams in the last 229 in this period. That's gonna be, I believe, number 55, Christopher Elnicki in the box for the Roadrunners. Rams are gonna wanna look to capitalize this as their last power play chance was stopped short from their own penalty. Metro State penalty is on number 55, Chris Elnicki. Two minutes for roughing. Elnicki, two minutes for roughing. Roadrunners penalty at 17.31. And coming with it fast is the Rams. It's off to the center, good pass off to the side. 
behind the Roadrunners net. And pass off to the blue line. Not able to get a shot off that one. Rams trying to set up a play here with their power play. And that one's going to be a shot and blocked. On the wall it goes, and trying to clear it out is the Roadrunners, but not out yet, and that one goes across the blue line. The penalty kill at work for the Roadrunners. And another big collision there on the wall, but it's out of the Roadrunner zone, and that's where they want it. This might be a possible chance for the Roadrunners. While they're a man down. Rams are going to take that away, though. About 50 seconds left in their penalty. Rams trying to set something up, and the Arai pass is just going to give another penalty kill opportunity for the Roadrunners. And again, it's behind the Rams' net. The last 30 seconds. And a pass off to the side. Couldn't get a handle on it. I believe that was number 29 for the Rams, Austin. And see. The last 15 seconds of the power play. Can the Rams do something with it? They're carrying in. Trying to set up a play going behind the net. That one gets passed back to Miller. Pass back to Johnson. That one goes off to the side. Trying to work with it. The power play is over. The man's coming back out. We're back to five on five. Miller with a shot. That one goes wide. And that one's a glove save, easy catch. Backhanded towards the net by Anzi. Glove save by the Roadrunners. So the last 15, five left to go in this period. And we're tied at 2-2. Face off to come in the Roadrunner zone. Possible chance for the Rams in these last seconds. They're going to try to make something of it. It's still in the Roadrunner zone. Bouncing around in the slot. And that one gets knocked away. And the icing call with two seconds left to go. If the Rams can make something happen off these two seconds, I will be very impressed. And it actually looks like the faceoff is going to be at center ice. Ref saying there was a deflection there. And off the faceoff, it goes down in the Roadrunner zone, and we have the first period coming to a close. See, folks, I told you, they're a lot better than me on the mic, so <laughs> we're happy to have them. We're going to step aside here while they have their intermission. And we will be back here for the second period. Thank you so much for watching Colorado Sports TV's coverage of the CSU Rams versus Metro State Roadrunners. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Colorado Sports TV's coverage of the CSU Rams versus Metro State. Welcome back, folks. Again, I'm Litos Castro. And I am Tristan Anderson. And we're here to get the second period underway after a very, very fast-paced and aggressive first period from both teams. We saw two goals scored aside, so it is tied at two. We saw some opportunities on the power play and penalty kill from both sides. One of those goals was a power play goal for the Roadrunners. And they came right back with a back-to-back -back one to tie it up after the Rams took an early lead in that in that first couple minutes. Going back to the face-off and center ice now, starting off the second period. And this one to the Roadrunners off the off the face-off, and we're now behind the Roadrunners net. And the Rams trying to catch that one off guard, but they just can't. It's going to be a race to the puck towards the Rams zone, trying to clear it out, but just couldn't. Still in the Rams zone, going behind the net. Possible chance to clear it out. And this one in front of the goal. Shot goes wide. And a 
Big opportunity there for the Roadrunners. And now it's about to go the other way for the Rams. Two on two situation, shot goes wide. Just trying to keep it in the zone. That's gonna be number 23 for the Rams. Tanner Gillis. And it's now heading the other way, getting dumped into the Rams zone. Tipped around. Rams trying to fight it out of there. And a big hit on the blue line. Big hit by number six, 26, Corey Taylor. This one hit back out. And it looks like white icing not going to be called on that one. And Roadrunners trying to work it out of their own zone. Rams now on the back end. We're fighting along the wall here. And a slap shot, and that one goes wide. And pass back, possible chance. Another shot, and that one goes wide again. But, and a rebound shot, and a score! That puck goes into the back of the net off of a rebound from the end boards of the glass. And again, Campus Ekeson trying to have some words with the ref about the net being knocked off, but the refs are holding firm with their decision again that that one is a goal. Now 3-2, the Rams leading with 18-13 left in the second period. So the Colorado Rams get their lead back. State goal! It's scored by number 29, Austin Ense, with the assist to number 26, Corey Taylor. Ense from Taylor, Rams goal at 1:47. And so right as this second period starts, the Rams gaining some momentum back as they take the lead. They're now up 3-2 and some big hits along the wall now. Across the blue line, the Roadrunners trying to keep it out of their own zone. And it gets dumped in. It's like going to be a couple changes there from the Rams side. And the Roadrunners setting up a play from behind their own net. That one's going to be launched across. Run runners trying to make something work of that one, but I believe Nelson, that's going to be Tyler Nelson, who has an assist for the Rams already, working for that one. And this one's now going down the other way. Eckerson trying to clear that one out, but that one goes in to the back of the net. Face off to come in the Roadrunner zone. Off of that attempted clear. I'm sure Morgan is happy that this face off isn't taking place in his zone. Players seem to be confused on where to be right now. <laughs> Now getting lined up, the faceoff is dropped and won by the Rams. And heading back, the Rams trying to set up a play. Off of the line change, Run Runners able to take control. That buck, that one gets dumped in. We've seen a lot of that from the Road Runners today. A lot of dump and chase. And they're able to work that one out of the corner. Trying to set up a play, pass across. That one goes awry. And it's now behind the net again, and another shove along the wall. And we're gonna have whistle blown. A hand pass due to stoppage of play. And the Roadrunners will get a line change out.
Faceoff to take place in the Rams zone. For the Roadrunners, Daniel Dvorak to take that for the on that faceoff there. They've got to hurry back. Working it from his own zone. There's Rayner. And some good moves. Possible rebound shot. That one goes wide. Big chance for the Roadrunners on that one. Just not able to capitalize. And Rams trying to clear it up. Gets deflected. It's going to be Grayson North for the Rams there. Trying to get a handle on that. And this is a possible one-on-one -on -one chance. We're going to round, but he slips and falls. And it looks like a we're going to get a penalty. Called on the Rams. Penalty. That is a penalty shot being taken by the Roadrunners on Joe Morgan. So the goal scoring, goal scoring opportunity taken away. And now the Roadrunners have a chance. This one about to be taken by Austin Shea. This is a chance for the Roadrunners to tie it back up. This penalty shot with 15.36 left to go. Big one coming from the crowd. And he's coming along, shot save! Saved by Joe Morgan. And that big save certainly has gotten this Rams crowd back into it. A huge opportunity for the Roadrunners that Morgan shuts down. Well done from him in the net. So off of that now, the face off to come in the Rams zone. The Rams, after the shot, still lead three to two with 15.36. Left to go in this second period. Trying to work it out from behind the net. That's gonna be Taylor. Taking it away to Nitchin. And that one's going to get knocked off. I believe that's to Riley. Or excuse me, Anse. Working it from behind the net. Centering pass. That one goes wide. Trying to keep it in the zone. That one gets knocked towards the center. Attempted slap shot there from Anse. But not able to capitalize on that one. Trying to get it out of their zone. And they do. The Roadrunners. Rams trying to set up another play now. And say with the puck. He's going to give a long pass over to Nitschen. He's going to send that one, dumping it into the corner. Rams are going to get a line change out. And trying to go for the pass that worked last time that led to the breakaway. Not able to work, and we're going to get a penalty now. We see the ref's arm go up, and the whistles blow. And we see some aggression coming out of the players now. Some pushing and shoving coming from the players between the Rams and the Roadrunners between number 15, Miller, and number 55 on the Roadrunners, Christopher Elnicki. Looks like number four for the Roadrunners, Jacob Reiner having some words with the ref. The Rams getting a power play off of that off of that play for a trip, uh, number 55, El Nicky. I believe is. this is his second time in the box. I think it is. I don't wonder if the coach has something to say about that one. Another power play chance for the Rams. They've had three. This will, or excuse me, this will be their third chance. Having two previous ones, they're going to see if they can Put something Road together now. penalty is on number 55, John DeWeird. Two minutes for tripping. 
to earn two minutes for tripping Metro State penalty at 524. This one at the blue line, and that one gets knocked into the Rams bench for a stab to play. Now the Rams with a chance in the Metro State zone. And taking it to the center, some shots and saved and it's now wide. Rams looking to set something up. This one gets passed off to the side, shot. And that one goes wide. Rams again with the puck. Looking to make something happen. Trying to get it deeper into the zone. And couldn't catch that one. That one's out of the zone now with 1.10 left to go in the power play. And some pressure coming along in this back end. And that's going to be Noah Miller able to work that one around. And a potential collision there. That one gets knocked up in the air. And again, Miller with the puck. Taking 50 it. seconds left in the Rams power play. This one now taken by number 21 for the Rams, Ben Joseph. This one going around behind the Roadrunner's net, able to stop the clearing opportunity there. That's going to be number nine for the Rams, Thrutchley. And just knocked out of the zone by the Roadrunners with 30 seconds left on the Rams' power play. And they are trying to set up in the defensive zone to make a play. Johnson now dumps it in. And the Rams are going to make a couple of changes. Whole line change there. Still possible chances, the Rams have possession behind the zone. That one's gonna get dumped, going across, shot. That one gets blocked wide. Back into the corner it goes. Rams sending more of them after that one. That one gets cleared out. Now a possible three on two chance for the Roadrunners. And that's a shot, that one's saved by Morgan. A rebound shot, that one gets blocked. And it's now going the other way. Roadrunners intercept that one. Rams trying to get some control now, that one goes around to Grayson North. This one being carried now. Number 23 for the Rams, Tanner Gillis. That one is behind the Roadrunners net, trying to clear it out. And Nelson dumping that one in. Tyler Nelson for the Rams. Collisions along the wall. Center ice. It's gonna be Tyler Nelson again. And the offsides call, Rams I believe. called offsides. Just couldn't get back in time for Liam Miller to take the puck up. We haven't lost any of the energy that we had in that first period. With 11.51 left to go in the second period, the Rams still lead three to two. Off the face off, the Rams win that one. Nelson's gonna pass that one off to the side. Number six, Ka Casaria, Brian Casaria on that one. And it's deep in the Roadrunner zone. And fighting for that one. Two Rams, two Roadrunners behind the net. And Rams trying to come away with that one. They just can't, but it's still in the zone. Roadrunners now trying to take it the other way with pace. And he just gets that one by. And it's a shot saved. No rebound opportunity, but we got a ram down behind the net. And the whistle is blown. Whistle blown due to injury on the play. We have a ram down sitting behind, behind the net. Looks like Joe Morgan, his goalie, is looking out for him, asking how he is. I believe that's Brian Casaria. That it went down on that play. He's gonna have to sit down for a few minutes. We hope he's okay. We don't want anyone getting too hurt while we're out here. Well, I'm sure the Casaria family is watching and Brian went off on his own power. He'll be back out in the ice just a minute. As you know, he's too stubborn to stay off too long. <laughs> this one behind the Rams net. 
Rams trying to clear it out, but the Roadrunners fighting to generate an opportunity to the blue line, passing across, and shot. That one goes wide. Along the wall it remains, behind the net again, and a centering pass, and a big save from Morgan. Big save from Morgan off that one-timer opportunity. Just getting it, just getting his glove up there to save that puck. Morgan coming through for his team. I'm sure his teammates love him right now. He's had quite a few big saves. Shutting down some big goal scoring opportunities. Face off in the Rams zone. Trying to clear it out. They just couldn't. Roadrunners keeping it in the zone. And that's going to be Grayson North trying to clear it out. And that one hits the side net. And for another stop, it's a play. I guess that we our, our visiting team's roster printout is incorrect. And some folks have texted us with the correct information. So we're going to get that out to you guys just as soon as we can. Can you text that? Sorry about that, folks. And thank you for keeping us honest. folks I believe we just have the updated roster now got a few number changes Thank you. but as we see now the Rams fighting in the roadrunner zone and that one just gets over the blue line and we're still seeing some fighting over here Riley the 28th of both teams Riley and I believe Van Leeuwen Hall for the roadrunners Shot off the face off and a big save, but it's still loose. Both teams jumping on that one. No goal scored, but what an opportunity. They had Ackeson in the Snow Angel trying to find that puck. Man, I can't wait. Yeah, uh, folks. Literally yesterday, the ice arena gave me permission to put cameras into the nets. Now, I don't have them yet. They're coming. But wow, was that not just a perfect opportunity to cut to that net cam? <laughs> we look forward to having that angle. Me too. And it looks like the refs are trying to work out their... I'm assuming they, they might have thought there would have been a penalty, but we, we will see. They are talking to the head coach of Metro State currently, Stephen Quayler, trying to figure out everything that's going on. Coach looks like he's satisfied with whatever explanation was given. So the faceoff now to come in the Roadrunner zone, trying to get another shot off the face off is the Rams, but they're not able to work with that one. And it's now headed into the Rams zone. And another big hit along the wall. And that's gonna be Nelson hitting it around. And the Roadrunners are currently offsides. And whistle just now called. We're still seeing some players getting aggressive with each other. Liam Miller, and again, Lewin Hall for the Roadrunners. It looks like 
Riley to take the face off there for the Rams. Both Millers on the ice for the Rams, Liam and Noah Miller. And Rams steal that one away. Possible. Pass towards the middle. And tried to get the shot off, but he just couldn't. He gets knocked down. And, and a penalty being called on the play for a trick. That was Kyle Nelson with the opportunity who got tripped on that one. Number three, Corey Hard going to the penalty box for Metro State, giving the Rams another power play opportunity. They haven't been able to capitalize on one. More five on four play action coming towards you. NC to take the face off of the Rams. He's going to almost win that one, but that one gets knocked out. It's a race to the puck, but Morgan's going to give that one a clear out. out Root zone. Runners penalty is on number three, Corey Hard. Two minutes for tripping. Hard, two minutes for tripping. Metro State penalty at 11 13. Again, that was Corey Hard with the penalty on the Roadrunners. This one goes across the slot there, shot, and that one went wide. And see with the puck behind the net. He looks like he lost it there, and that one ends up being cleared out now. Morgan controlling that one behind his own net. Ram's going to now try to set something up. And we see Noah there trying to work some magic. And this one to Riley on the side. He's trying to take it down with pace. Fighting in the corner is the Rams. Noah Miller trying to get a shot off. That one gets blocked. Keeping it in is Johnny Tower. That one gets dumped out, though. And again, Morgan controlling that one. Just about 40 seconds left to go in the power play. You got to give credit to this Roadrunner penalty kill. They're making it real difficult on the Rams, but this is a possible chance for Johnny. And the shot, and it's a goal! Oh. Number 28, Kyle Riley with the goal, assisted by Johnny Tower. Ram fans seem to be happy with that extra goal leading the Ram Rams now leading 4-2 with 7.15 left in the second. So the Rams finally able to capitalize on that power play chance. And that one gets dumped in by the Roadrunners. The Rams now lead 4-2 with seven Colorado minutes. Colorado State power play goal! Good by number 28, Kyle Riley. With the assist to number seven, Johnny Tower, and number 16, Torin Foundos. Riley from Tower and Foundos, Rams power play goal at 12.45. Mark can really get himself excited. <laughs> we see Corey Taylor getting tossed out of the faceoff on that one. And Nitchin was going to go in, but he's going to hold off on that one. So number 29 for the Rams, Anse. And that one knocked off the net for another stoppage of play. Flicked out of play by the Roadrunners, so the faceoff will come outside of the zone. Mini line change there for the Rams. And that's going to be Tito Moreno there taking the face off for the Rams. And now working it down. That was Grayson North dumping it in the zone. And Moreno now making his presence known. And a possible chance. And that's going to be who just got an assist, Foundos. 
getting knocked down on that one. And a possible chance for the Roadrunners, but gets knocked around. And that chance is shut down, dumped back into the Rams zone, and caught by Morgan, and he's going to give that back off to Johnny Tower. And the Rams now trying to take it out of their own zone. Moreno taking it down the right side. He's trying to pull a little bit around there. Gets knocked down, and it's out of the zone again. Back to Founder. He's got control of it in his own zone. Gives it to Miller behind his neck. A little back-to-back -back pass there we see from the Rams. We're going to see the dump in. Rams trying to set something up in the corner. This one going across the center there, but Rams not able to capitalize on that one. Now it's being taken down the other way. Possible chance, sliding it through, but no one there for him. That was number 27, Dvorak for the Roadrunners, trying to set up that play. And just off of the play, Liam Miller, number 15, going down, slowly heading off the ice. This one, a possible chance for the Rams. A two on two, try to get the centering pass, just barely gets his stick on it. And that's number 23 for your Rams, Tanner Gillis. And we now have a player down. And the crowd is not happy. Lots of roughing going down with the players. A penalty already has been called. Some wrestling seems to be going down between Riley and number 15 for Metro State, Barons. I believe we are going to have at least one penalty assessed. Number 28 for Colorado State, Riley has been into the penalty box now. And it seems that he is the only one of the Rams going into the penalty box. The Rams look like they're discussing some options here. And now it's a possible meeting opportunity for both teams. 4.55 left in the second period. The Rams are leading 4-2, and the refs are consulting what penalties to hand out to each team. Do we believe we have a player in each box, but it looks like the Roadrunners are going to get their penalty taken back. And they're trading that out for someone else, actually. So that's going to be, I believe, number 13 for Metro State, Kevin Harris. He's on his way to the showers. And the Metro State player who was just recently in the box has now been escorted off of the ice. And he will be hitting the showers early. So this game just took a big turn in this second period. We saw the aggression building up between both teams from the moment. The puck first hit the ice. And I believe we're about to see some four on four hockey after the refs figure out what the situation is going to be. The captain's now consulting with the refs to see which, what is happening with their teams to get an explanation. So far we have one player in each penalty box and one that was escorted off of the ice. And the player from Metro State, number 27, with a five-minute major who was uh, taken off the ice, Daniel Vorak. He's been a key player for the Metro State. He's been generating a lot of opportunities, trying to set up a place for his team. So that's going to be a, a big dent in the game plan for the Roadrunners. You can only wonder how they're going to respond to that one. And then they also have that two-minute minor to deal with as well from... Kevin Behrens. So 
Two players in the box for the Roadrunners, one for the Rams. Yeah, but Lauren hasn't shut the door yet. <laughs> so are they going to have a third player, a third Roadrunner joining them? The Zebras are pointing to it. See some visible frustration from the Roadrunner side. Roadrunners only have three on the ice. This is going to be a big chance for the Rams. We're going to be looking to see if Eckerson can shut those chances down. And so now we have some five on three hockey. Three players in the penalty box for the Metro, Metro City, uh, Metro State, I'm sorry, Roadrunners. Rams now giving some pack, passing back and forth, trying to send it into the center, and that one gets knocked away. I believe we'll get an update on those penalties here in just a moment. Rams taking Penalty it down. being assisted, assessed at the 15.05 mark of the period. On Metro State's number 27, Daniel Dvorak, five minute major for head contact and a game misconduct. Serving the five minute major for the Roadrunners is number 74, excuse me, number 24, Zach Nima. Also in the box is number 13, Kevin Behrens for Metro State, serving a four minute roughing penalty. For Colorado State, number 28, Kyle Riley, two minutes for roughing. So things have just gotten even more interesting now as we have a fourth player that just got added to the penalty box for the Roadrunners. They could have a party in there soon. <laughs> so we're still on some five on three hockey and a shot coming from the center at the blue line, just barely keeping it in his Noah Miller. State penalty is on number 21, Austin Shea, two minutes for cross checking. Shea, two minutes for cross checking. Roadrunners penalty at 15.59. So the shot coming off of that one was Thrutchley. That one got blocked and off the back net for another stoppage of play. 3.44 left to go in the major, in the five minute major. We saw from Duvac, and 44 seconds left to go in the penalty from Jeff Mofat. And that one we're seeing a lot of the Rams tossed out of the face-off circle tonight. That was Kyle Nelson. Possible clearing opportunity for the Roadrunners. That one indeed does get cleared. Morgan says he's got it. He's going to hand that one off to Casaria. Rams thinking now going to try to set up a play with this big power play opportunity that they have. On the right side. Fighting along the wall. Rams trying to get that puck out, and they do. Possible chance. Pass to the middle. Shot. That one's on top of the net. And again, still the aggression coming out from the players. A big opportunity from the Rams. A big shot. and Just not where they wanted that shot to end up. After that puck ended up on top of the net, it was frozen and called as a whistle. And now the puck comes for a face off in the road on zone. Still five on three hockey. Rams are gonna win that one. Again, that's Kyle Nelson winning that one. And that's a shot from the blue line. That one gets blocked. Nelson with the puck, he's gonna drop that one back and another shot. Coming from number six, Casari. He's gonna pass that one, and that's gonna be Johnny Ty with a shot, and that one gets frozen. And again, we're seeing so much aggression. It's time between Liam Miller and number 65 from Metro State, 
Lucas Blancos. The referee had to separate the players. And I, we're gonna see Liam Miller escorted off the ice on this one. And he's gonna head to the penalty box. Right as I believe Riley was coming out. Liam Miller now oh. told he doesn't have to go into the penalty box. Actually going off the ice instead. With 2.40 left in the, in the second period. What a game we have here. So that is, if I've done my math right, two players that have been tossed out of this game. And the ref set More sorting players this out. to the locker room. And another player escorted off for the Roadrunners. I believe it is because the Roadrunners already have so many people in the penalty box that serving the penalty in the, in the box will be an inconvenience for them. And this one off the faceoff, the Rams still having the advantage and a possible chance there. That shot went wide. Riley from the corner, that one gets knocked out of the zone. The penalty kill continues for the Roadrunners. Coincidental penalties being assessed at 17:20 on of the battle uh, of the period. A Metro State's number 65, Lucas Blantquist, two minutes for roughing and ten minutes on sportsmanlike. The Rams penalty is on number 15, Liam Millar, two minutes for roughing and ten minutes for on sportsmanlike. Millar and Blantquist, coincidentals at 17:20. And again, as we're having. Another set of penalties announced, we get another one. And I, I believe that one is also on the Roadrunners. I believe it's gonna be a hit from behind. The refs seem to do more playing than the players at this <laughs> point. So as we take a look at the current situation, we just saw number 55 for the Roadrunners head into the, into the box, that's to word. As we take a look at the current penalties up on the board, number 21, Austin Shea. Just under a minute left, some shots coming from the Rams. And still some big saves coming from Atkinson. And another penalty, another penalty we see here. The referee's arm go up. And down on the ice we have Foundos. This time, a penalty being called on the Rams, number 28, Kyle Riley. I believe he's been in the box a few times for the Rams tonight. By Metro State's number 55, John DeWert, two minutes for, mis 10 minutes for misconduct. DeWert, two minutes, 10 minutes for misconduct for Metro State. So now we have a five-minute penalty. Also being penalized penalty. at 1802, number four, Jake Reiner for Metro State. Two minutes for cross-checking. So now we have a five-minute penalty up on the board for the Rams. So it's now four on three. The game, oh, this is a chance for the Rams, and that one gets saved. Atkinson with a big save off of that opportunity. The power play continues for the Rams. We have just 1.31 left to go in this second period. The Rams still lead four to two, and we still have many penalties to be served. If you take a look over at that penalty box, they're running out of room in there. Riley seems to want an explanation for having five minutes up for his penalty. Yeah, Lauren looks like she's got a fan club going over there. <laughs> Rams, Rams penalty is on number 28, Kyle Riley, five minute major for checking from behind. Riley, five minute major, checking from behind, Colorado State's penalty at 18-16. So 
So the Rams still trying to get off the penalty, or excuse me, trying to work off the power play that they have here. And this one working now in the Roadrunner zone. We're about to have one penalty that just concluded. We're going to see, I believe that was number 21 for Metro State, Austin Shea. His penalty is up, but it is still four on three hockey. The Rams with the advantage. Pass coming across. Tower with a shot, and it's still rolling in front. This one going across behind the net and trying to shoot it from behind. That one gets knocked over and out of the zone. The final 30 seconds of this period coming down. So we have a number 27 penalty. Just about 20 seconds left for Metro State. It's going to be Dvorak's penalty, who is not on the ice with us currently. And that one gets cleared out. Morgan's going to stop that one. The final seconds of this period going to come to a close. And the two periods of play, it's Colorado State 4, Metro State 2. What an eventful second period we had. A crazy second period. Many calls by the refs. So many stoppages of plays within the last five, six minutes. So what a situation we have here on our hands. Multiple penalties still need to be served. We're going to take a look at that one. So when we come back after this second period intermission, we will give you the rundown of what we know. Thank you for watching this game with us, and we hope you stay with us. We'll be right back for this second period intermission. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Colorado Sports TV's coverage. We're back with the third period. We had a really ruckus second period. It's just amazing. And I believe we got some info about what's going on. Yes, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are beginning the third period here, where CSU leads Metro State 4-2. to two. And it looks like these penalties are finally closing out. Now, I got talking to some folks about what they were hearing during all the chaos of all the penalties being assessed during that in the last moments of the second period. And, and as we're seeing some big hits already coming through, not even a minute into this third period, and a big backhander, and that one gets blocked. And that one's a glove save, easy catch, tracks in. As you can see, four on four play now as one of Metro State's penalties has just ended. Starting off the period with a four on three play. Uh, with the second period just ending in complete chaos, we're not exactly sure what's happened at the end of there, but there is a four on four now. You still see three Roadrunners in the penalty box, two in the Ram side. We see number four, Jacob Reiner for Metro State. His penalty is about to end up as there's still just about two and a half minutes left to go in Kyle Riley's five minute major. This one getting passed across and it's now into the Ram zone. And the attempt to clear it out there, that is Tyler Nelson. Roadrunners with the puck now on the right side. And a possible chance, shot, and another shot in that one. Gets saved there by Morgan. He is having, after those first two goals in the first period, he's definitely gotten back on his game. And a great shot block by number 23, Tanner Gillis as well. Yeah, so with all those penalties, you'd see some players walking off the ice and they're joking around with each other after moments before. So now the Roadrunners 
have a power play opportunity after the Rams had a long, long power play. And they weren't able to really make anything of it. And now the Roadrunners have a chance. They're trying to keep it in the Rams zone. That's Anse with the puck. And he's going to dump that down. And that's going to hit the back wall. Just under, just under a minute 20 left to go in Riley's penalty. And that's a shot. Easy glove save for Morgan. And while some of the players may have been able to joke around the coaches, the head coaches of both sides, we here were having a few words exchanged with one another. So it's definitely gone beyond the players now as we hear. This face off in the ramp zone. That was a, this one gets passed across. Getting a little tripped up and that one gets knocked out of the zone. A minute left to go in Riley's penalty. And the Rams doing a great job on the penalty kill so far. They have had one power play goal scored against them. They're going to try and keep it from being another. And with pace coming down the right side. And the shot in that one goes over the net. And number seven, Johnny Tower for the Rams. Dumping that one out. Getting that one to Axon and a fumble of the puck there right in front of the net. Tower giving some good pressure, giving the Rams time to reassess what they're going to do. This one being taken into the Rams zone, shot, and that one gets tipped and out. Fourteen seconds left to go on that penalty before... Riley is able to come out of that box. He spent a lot of time in there today. Probably made some friends down there. So we have Corey Taylor, and I believe number 18 for Metro State. That's going to be Cody Pishola taking that face off there in the Ram zone. And that's going to be Grayson North getting that one out in his own zone. Four seconds left to go now in the penalty. Possible quick opportunity for the Roadrunners off this faceoff. This one gets knocked off the side. Rams win that one. And North able to try and work it out. So the penalty kill is successful for the Rams. It's now a 2 on 1 opportunity. It's a getting the pass shot. Goal! Sneaking at five hole, number three, Jonathan Johnson. Off of that little one-timer tip. The Rams now making it 5-2, scoring with 16-29 left in the third. Right off the penalty kill. As soon as the penalty was over, the Rams came in, gave great pressure. Took the puck away, took it down the other way, and were able to get, get the goal. A great two-on-one opportunity for the Rams turned into an amazing goal. A great assist from Anse. He just, that's a goal and an assist to his name now for this game. And Jonathan Johnson, as you said, with the goal. That one gets dumped into the Roadrunner zone. Rams now have a 5-2 lead in this third period. And it looks Colorado like... Colorado State goal! Scored by number three, Jonathan Johnson with the assist to number 29, Austin Anse. Johnson from Anse, Rams goal at 3.31. This one now in the Rams corner. That's going to be, I believe, Noah Miller knocking that one out. And that one goes to number 13, Kyle Nelson, taking it into the Roadrunner zone. Fighting behind the net. Again, Nelson applying pressure. Roadrunners trying to take it out of their own zone now. That one's going to get dumped down, trying to get that long pass. We've seen that a couple times from the Roadrunners. And it was successful once in at least generating a goal-scoring opportunity, which led to that penalty shot, but was unsuccessful in that second period. Nitchin now. Able to give some good pressure. He's been a key asset for this Rams defense today. 
Some more collisions on the wall. And the crowd certainly loving the action that they're seeing on the ice today. And the Rams trying to work that one out. Number 29, Anse. Trying to get that out of his own zone. And trying to reach around. Anse with a breakaway chance. And he shoots, and it's a glove save from Mackison. Anse with the good opportunity with the breakaway, just shut down completely by the Metro City goaltender with a glove. Goalkeeper Ackerson unfazed by that breakaway opportunity and makes the glove save like he does it every day. He probably does do it every day. <laughs> Rams win that face off. That one gets shot and that hits the back wall. Jonathan Johnson, after just scoring a goal, trying to set up another opportunity for his team. Johnny Tower to get to the puck first, and he's going to dump that in, give the Rams time to reset a little bit. And again, Tower now has it in his own zone. He's going to pass that over to North. It's going to go a little bit of ways away from him. Roadrunners now have the puck. They're trying to take it down the other way. A deflection at center ice. And Johnson gets beat. It's now into the Rams zone. North trying to clear that one out, and he does. Heading towards the Roadrunners zone. I believe that's number 24 for Metro State, picking up that book. Zach Mayman. And this is a chance for the Rams now as they've taken it back. And it's going to be a shot. And it's another glove save from Agassin. Shot coming from Sam Coat, who has a goal to his name already. Great move by him, too, just stopping up to have the defender fly past him and set up for a nice shot. Now, we do have five on five hockey, but we do have two players in the box still for the Roadrunners and one in for the Rams. This one gets shot and tipped off at Kassin. And it's now taken down the other way. Roadrunners trying to make something happen. And we have a penalty arm go up. Oh, it's a chance for the Rams. And it gets frozen. Looks like we have one Ram in the net. That is. Can't score be... the puck, score yourself. <laughs> That's going to be Sam Coat that was in the net there. See, now Sam's making me nervous. He would have bumped right into the camera. <laughs> <laughs> so now we'll see Kyle Riley to take the face off after. He spent a long time in that penalty box. He's trying to get some action back out on the ice. Well, he had a timeshare in it last year. <laughs> <laughs> so now Noah Miller working it in his own zone. And some big collisions we see here. Gets over the blue line. Now the Rams have it behind their own net. Trying to make something happen. That one gets passed up and they're gonna lose it there at center ice. It's gonna be number 17, Christopher Nitchin. Roadrunners now playing with it in the back of their own zone. This one going across center ice. And gets it through the legs there, but not able to make a chance off of it. Rams now taking it down the other way. Ryan Casaria is going to dump that one in. Rams are going to get a line change in. This one knocked up the wall and out. And since the puck was knocked off of the glass first, the, the I'm sorry, the the face-off will be inside of the Roadrunner zone still. 12.20 left to go in this third period. Rams have scored one goal this period. It's a race to the puck at center ice. Roadrunners now trying to fight to keep it in the Rams zone. They have a chance here. That's number three for Metro State, Corey Hard who did have one tripping penalty earlier this game. This one gets deflected and into the back net it goes.
Now with 11.59 left. Tristan, what do you think Roadrunners are going to have to do here as far as a game plan is to get back into this game? So far you've seen from the Roadrunners a lot of pressure in the Rams defensive zone, which is something they're going to have to keep up if they want to be able to get that puck into the back of the net. Cause more turnovers, get the puck in front of the net, and take your shot. Rams definitely not wanting that to happen as they're holding it behind their own net there. That was Johnny Tower, and he's going to pass that one off, I believe, to Grayson North. And it's now a fight at the blue line here, right in front of the Rams bench. Again, North able to work that one through. And this is now a three-on-one chance, and it's just deflected off the centering pass. And that opportunity shut down for the Rams. Taking it down the other way. The Roadrunners with pace. Pass across and no one there for that one. And we see a penalty arm go up and the whistle is blown for that one. Interference call on that as we saw a hit in the center of ice where the puck was nowhere near. It looks like the Roadrunners are finally down to just one body in the penalty box. Tito Moreno for that interference call. Gets two minutes and a Metro City power play. Metro State, I'm sorry. Now, we've seen now both sides have chances at power plays and penalty kills. The Rams were able to kill their last penalty. They're going to see if they can do it again. This one goes to the back of the net. Roadrunners have possession of the puck. They're going to pass that back to the blue line. Goes across. That one's going to get passed across. Centering shot. Try to get the... Backhander in there. Just couldn't get it. At the blue line again. Pass across to the left side. Off to the right. And shot from the center. That one gets blocked and tips. Hits the back net. And number 17 for Colorado State, Nitchin, had a great diving block there for the possible rebound for Metro, Metro State. Now the Roadrunners have another face-off in the Rams zone. And that one gets back to number 12, Anthony Newsom for the Roadrunners, and it's now passed off to number four, Jacob Reiner. Back. The Rams penalty is on to number Reiner. 11, Tito Marino, two minutes for interference. Marino, two minutes for interference. Colorado State penalty at 8.47. And we see Lewin Hall being aggressive in that corner as we've seen him be quite aggressive towards the Rams throughout this match. And this one gets cleared out now by the Rams and a chance for a line change. Just about one minute left to go in the penalty. 10 minutes, 10 seconds left to go in the game. Rams still lead 5-2, possible chance for the Roadrunners. Taking it around behind the net. And goes across. Jacob Reiner with the puck. Lewin Hall behind him, and good save from Morgan. That puck swallowed up by Morgan as a shot from the center ice. 35 minutes remaining in the Rams penalty kill. Minutes? Seconds. <laughs> I second guessed myself. I wasn't sure if, whether or not I said minutes or seconds. <laughs> Well, with some sports, seconds can feel like minutes, so. <laughs> and a shot off the faceoff, and again, off the back wall. We'll have another faceoff. And the Rams. Yeah, I wonder if they contacted the control tower before that hit that <laughs> launch. I, they went airborne there. So another faceoff in the Rams zone. North is going to try and clear that out. This one goes behind Tower trying to clear it out. And I believe that is number 45, 65, excuse me, for the for Metro State. Lucas Blunquist able to get his stick on that before it went all the way back down the ice. And Blunquist trying to set something up here. Dips it back, goes it back, shot, and that one gets deflected. Goes behind the net. And North. So and say back-to-back -back plays with great blocks. Definitely have to give credit to the Rams' defense. They've definitely cleaned it up 
since that first period. Morgan's been on his game in net, and we've seen all the defenders coming through, working hard to not let the Roadrunners have easy shots on net. And that's Noah Miller with the puck there, trying to get that out. And it's passed up and dumped in by Kyle Nelson. Into the corner it goes. Pass to center ice. Not able to get a shot off of that. We see Noah Miller with the puck again. And, and Kyle Nelson in the corner with that one. Fighting Miller with a shot. And off the pad. And I believe that's Kyle Riley again getting physical with the Roadrunners. And I think we're about to have another penalty. Another Roadrunner penalty on number 13, Kevin Barrens. This has got to be frustrating for the coaching staff on this Roadrunner side. The Roadrunners have to be thankful that the Rams have not capitalized on every power play opportunity. Otherwise, the score might be very different. Puck taking a weird bounce off the Zamboni doors there. So Rams with another power play opportunity. And that's Dutchley giving it off to Miller. Miller taking it in across the blue line. He's taking it down into the corner. Metro State penalty is on number 13, Kevin Burns. Two minutes for elbow. Burns, two minutes for elbow. Roadrunners penalty at 11.24. And this one fighting behind the net. Rams trying to get it out so they can set up a play as time is running out on that power play. Ben Joseph now in the corner. And that one, I believe, to number eight, Sam Coat. And back to Miller. He's going to give it off to Anse. He's going to take it to the center in the slot shot. And that one, possible chance. And it's rule of goal. The puck just trickled over the line, and the ref was right there to see it and rule the goal. Colorado State now up 6 2 with 7.33 remaining in the third period. The Rams scoring their second power play goal of the game. And I believe that was also off a rebound shot, which the Rams have also scored another goal on earlier this game. And that gives them the lead 6-2 with 7.30 left to go in this game. Colorado State power play goal. Draw by number eight, Sam Coat, with the assist to number four, Noah Miller. Coat from Miller. Rams power play goal at 12.27. So Coat, as you heard, had the goal. That is his second goal of the game. Rams have another opportunity. That's going to be Tito Moreno, who just couldn't make something work out of that one. But still, bouncing Sam around in front of the net. I believe that's going to be Colorado Miller State. for the Roadrunner taking a shot in that save by Morgan. Now the face off to come in the Rams zone. Again, the Rams lead 6-2 with 6.45 left to go in the third period. Roadrunners trying to make something happen, trying to generate some sort of offense. And that's gonna be Kyle Riley trying to get it out of his own zone, and he does. Kyle Nelson hurrying for that one. He's gonna hold it behind the Roadrunner net. and sliding back and forth. Shot in the middle on that one from Riley gets blocked and wide. And losing the puck. And it's going behind the net again. North is gonna go off the ice for the Rams. To make way for 
Sam Thrutchley to come in on defense, and that's a shot and an easy save for Morgan. Not a challenge for him at all. Morgan looking very confident in net lately since that first period after he got that second goal scored on him. Another faceoff to come into the Rams zone. As you said, Rams, Morgan, and just the entire team itself showing some great confidence out there on the ice. This one's going to get trickled down towards center ice. That's Newsom with the puck. And they're going to try another long pass, and that one gets away from them. Noah Miller with the puck going behind his own net. Trying to pass it back now. And that was 17. Christopher Nitchin getting that out, and that one gets launched over across center ice, and it's a rice to the puck. And I believe we're going to have an icing call. Roadrunners with lots of pressure to the Rams in their defensive zone, forcing them to make that icing. So 5.29 left to go in this third period. The Roadrunners are running out of time to begin their comeback if they want to stay in this game. That's one's going to get dumped in there by Ense. And it goes around the net, and trying to get it around, I believe, was Nitchin. This one's still behind the net. And in the, the center, and a shot, and that one gets deflected, and rebound shot, that one goes way wide. And a glove save off the side shot from Akasu. Both teams making line changes as we're reaching the five minute mark in the third period. Rams with a four goal lead. And they're gonna get the shot off the face off. It's gonna get blocked by Axon. And that's number 22, Max Engel for the Rams getting some time in on the ice. And a stoppage of play due to a hand pass by the Rams. And I think it's safe to say that the tensions have cooled down a little bit. We definitely haven't seen as much aggressive play from either team as we saw in that first and second period. Well, when the higher scoring games start to happen, usually both teams try to calm down a little bit. Usually. You don't want to showboat so much. I'm not sure how much they really want to. Uh, they don't want to make them look like fools, but this is D1 hockey. You want, to, you want to score as many goals as you can, get as many goals to your name. And speaking of goals, we might have a goal-scoring opportunity here. Deacon it around number seven for Metro State. Ryan Bishop trying to generate an opportunity. More shots coming. And a big save, and it looks like we had a hit to the head on Morgan after the play was over. And just as we were talking about the aggressive play going away. Morgan just pushed over by number 16 from Metro State, C.J. Miller. And I think we're going to see C.J. Miller go into the box. But... Looks like we might have an offsetting penalty as we also have a ram in the box. And it looks like that is what we have, two offsetting penalties. We're gonna have some 4 4 hockey in these last five minutes. Tower trying to get it out of his own zone. He's going to get that one to Riley. And that one going towards center. Caught and brought down by number 16. The coincidental miners being assessed at 1537 of the period. Penalty on Metro State's number 16, CJ Miller. Two minutes for roughing. The Rams' penalty is on number six, Brian Casaria. Two minutes for roughing. 
Casaria and Miller, two minutes each at 15.37. And during that penalty announcement, we just had a goal scored from the Roadrunners. Lucas Blomquist taking a slap shot from the right side and it just getting past, past Morgan after his initial save. So that puts the Roadrunners within three with 3.53 left to go in the third period. Still a minute 30 left to go on those penalties. So still four on four hockey. We're gonna see if that's a confidence booster at all for the Roadrunners. I'm pretty sure they're saying not to count them out. And as we've seen, they can score some rapid goals as they did have those back-to-back -back goals in the first period. This one gets dumped into the Roadrunner zone. That one's gonna be Austin Anse fighting them. Metro State. Even and we're going to lose a stick there. by number 65, Lucas Blanquist, with the assist to number 29, Blaine Manatra, and number 55, John DeWerd. Blanquist from Manatra and DeWerd. Roadrunner's goal at 16.07. Rams trying to work it out of their own zone now. We just heard that Blaine Manatra was the one with that goal or excuse me, that assist on that play. So now he has a goal and an assist to his name, so a good game for him. In the last 30 seconds of the penalties coming. And minor collision there on the side, and Rams are gonna dump that one in. Miller specifically to dump that one in, and we're gonna see a couple line changes there. In the final two and a half minutes now, and that's going to be Newsom carrying it down. He's facing some pressure. It's into the Rams corner. A hit on the long the wall. And pass back. Rams intercept that one. Still in the Rams zone though. Pass towards the center. It's not in the net yet. It's behind. Rams trying to push him off. Roadrunners still have possession of the puck. They're looking to set up a play. Rams showing some physical sides now. And that one's going to get dumped out of the Rams zone. And we're going to see Liam Miller now. He's applying some pressure down to the Roadrunner zone. And he's going to get some Roadrunners coming after him. He's holding the puck down there. And a big jumping stop there. And a shot backhanded. And that one goes wide. Shot coming from Sam Coat, Going for his hat trick goal. And that's a shot from the blue line. That one goes wide. Just under a minute and a half to go left in the third period. And that's number 28 from Metro State, Lewin Hall. We've seen a lot of this game. Roadrunner trying to make something happen. There's going to be a shot, wrist shot from the center. Rebound shot. And we're going to have a whistle blow. That's dedication. <laughs> Spend your wedding anniversary at a hockey game. 15 years. I can't think of anything more romantic. <laughs> so off the face off, this one immediately goes out of the Ram zone. Well, I'm glad you say that, because I'll be doing the same thing next week myself. <laughs> <laughs> the final minute now in this third period, the Rams have a six to three lead. And a possible chance. This one now getting knocked out of the Roadrunner zone. And that one gets dumped back in by Thrutchley. Rams trying to clear, or excuse me, Roadrunners trying to clear that one out. It's in the corner along the wall now. Roadrunners trying to take it down the other way. They love that fast paced counter attack. And it's still in the Roadrunner zone. Possible shot, backhanded. That one goes wide. That was number 16 for the Rams. Torn Founders, who has an assist on this game. Taking it down now. That was Nitchin trying to show off a little move there, but couldn't get it around him. In the final 10 seconds, the Rams are ready to celebrate their first win of the season. 
And this game is over. Rams take the win, six to three. That's the final period, end of the third. Everyone's going and hugging over there. Goalie, Joe Morgan, who had an amazing game with some great saves. As you said, Joe Morgan, a huge star for this Ram team, as he came through with a lot of saves. After the first two goals for the Roadrunners in the first period, he wasn't letting any fly. Rams rightfully celebrating their first win of the season. And what a better way to start off their hockey season than Give, with a win. Giving a salute to their fans, thanking them for coming out, seeing this amazing 6-3 win. Well, folks, we thank you for watching Colorado Sports TV. It was a great game, and we hope you'll tune in tomorrow when the Rams take on Minot State right here in Fort Collins. We thank you for watching.